Hey guys, how's it going? Clinton Jones here, and uh, today we're going to be talking about how to do the Fallout 3 or Fallout New Vegas uh, VATS tutorial. And it's a pretty specific tutorial, but you can definitely use a lot of the techniques and ways of doing things for your own projects. So, let's get started. Uh, we'll get our in and out points first here. Um, I think I had it here. If you select your footage and hold Alt, beginning bracket, it will cut it right at your cursor and we're going to do a freeze frame effect about here. We'll go forward a little bit and alt end bracket. So let's uh, bring our cursor to the beginning and hit beginning bracket. No alt this time, just beginning bracket and it will bring it to the beginning. Um, now let's freeze frame it here. So just like in the game it freezes and it zooms in and it selects certain parts of the body. So if you go to the point where you want to freeze, right click go to time, enable time remapping. You make a keyframe over here, go forward one frame by hitting the page down key on your keyboard. Make another keyframe and then take these last two keyframes and bring them to the end of the composition. Then you can bring your footage out like this. And you can see if we preview that, it gives us the uh, freeze frame effect. So, alright, now that we got that, uh, what we'll do is we're actually going to be zooming in. So if you want to zoom in, you know, if you zoom in with any footage you're going to lose quality. Um, so since this is 1080p footage, what we can do is go to composition, composition settings, and I'm going to take this down to let's see 720 by 405 and if you have this checked on it'll keep the aspect ratio uh, locked so now what we do is we select our footage we hit S and you scale it down to fit the composition so this works here now if you hit U you can see when it freeze frames or you can see all your keyframes on your uh, on your layer here so what we'll do is when it gets to about here, we are going to zoom in. So if you hit the P key and you hold shift and hit S, it'll bring up our position and scale options. And you can just click on both of these to make a keyframe. And we'll go forward uh, 20 frames or so. And we will scale this up and reposition it to about here. <coughs> because what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the body and then we're going to move up to select the head. So we go forward, make some more keyframes, go forward again, then move it up because we'll move up to the head. And We can actually move these back just a little bit and then we'll go forward a little more, make some more keyframes and then we will scale this back out or scale it back down, I mean, and then just reposition it just like that. So we get zoom in, move up, and then zoom out. So if you want to right click, or not right click, if you want to select all these, then right click them. Go to keyframe assistant, easy ease, or just hit F9 on, uh, on your keyboard and that will make the animation a lot smoother. It'll start slower and then it'll speed up and then it'll slow down to stop. Now we're gonna wanna make sure that we have motion blur turned on. So as you can see, if it's turned on here, you know, it looks a lot better. It looks more realistic. But we'll leave this off for now, uh, because it takes a little a little longer to render. So we'll just leave it off while we're working on this project here. Alright, next we're going to outline uh, our person here. This is from a short film I did a while ago, uh, Fallout 3 short film, and we are going to start with this outline, this glowy outline right here. And This happens to everyone that you can see in the frame. So this one we just got one person. But uh, let's go to layer, new, solid, and it doesn't matter what color it is. And let's type in Vegas and drag this onto our solid. Now if you select the solid and hit T, we can bring the opacity down to zero so that we can see what we're doing. 
Now if we zoom in, actually let's go to the point in time where it's going to freeze frame. So if you hit U on your footage, uh, we can see it freeze frames right here. So if you hit Shift 1, um, you can make a little marker up here just for reference. So let's zoom in here and we are going to cut ourselves out. The Vegas effect isn't really going to do anything um, until we change some of the options inside. But the more accurate you are uh, with cutting yourself out, you know, the better it's going to look. Some masks don't have to be perfect, but in our case, uh, it has to be pretty good, pretty good. Alright, so once we got ourselves cut out here, you can select your black solid, hit T, and bring the opacity back up. Now if you hit this button here, it'll get rid of our mask, and you can kind of see what you're doing a little better. Now let's mess with some of these settings over here. Uh, if you set the stroke to mask slash path, and then set the path to mask 1, you can see we have this dotted line kind of thing going on. Um, and you change the blend mode to transparent. So we need the uh, we need a solid line we don't need these dotted lines here so if you take the segments to one that would get us halfway there and then if you take the end opacity to one you would get the full solid line here now we can leave the width at two I believe and we would change the color to a greenish color because that's how it is in a uh, in fallout Now let's duplicate this. Hit Control D, change the color to white, and then bring the width down to one. Now if we go over here and we type fast blur, drop it on the green outline, bring that up to maybe three. You can get a glowy, uh, kind of a glowy effect without having to use the glow filter. This way, it'll render faster. So if you take both of those and you hit toggle switches. Uh, you already may be on this mode, but if you set them to add, they'll give us a nice hot glowy effect here. That looks really nice. Now, if you take both of these layers and you take this little pick whip and you parent it to the footage, when we start to zoom in, it'll stick to the body. Now with Motion Blur 2, it'll look really awesome. Pretty much want to turn on Motion Blur for everything that's moving. It always makes things look better. Alright, so what I'm doing right now is I'm just basically building up the elements um, and then we'll start animating them and fading them in and out uh, once they're all built. It's basically just uh, keyframing the opacity um, is all, you know, once we have our effects. So now we need to make this grid. So to do that, we'll go to Layer, New, Solid, just like before. Doesn't matter the color. And then now we type in Grid. And then we'll scroll down, and right here under Generate is the grid we want. Apply it there, and let's let's actually name our layers here. You want to be very organized when you have lots of layers, and we'll end up having quite a bit of layers here. Um, outline white and outline green. It's always good to be organized. Okay, so back to the grid here. 
we can take our border down to 2 and then we take it from corner point to width and height sliders we bring our width sliders all the way up the height down to let's see we'll be here when we apply this down to 3 yeah that works um, we'll change the color to green now what we'll do to get rid of these lines here we'll go to the feather and we'll set the width feather to 400 now if you drop down this little this little arrow here it only goes up to 20 but a lot of them you can bring them up past the number it can you know it displays here 400 is as, is as far as it goes so once we get that we want to apply our mask from this layer if you hit M you can see your mask to the grid layer so that it's just the grid is just inside this outline now if I was to do that now it wouldn't do anything you actually have to pre-compose it now to do that you just hit control shift C and you want to move all attributes into the new composition hit OK take our mask control C control V and we get the effect we're looking for now we want to set this to add as well it just looks much better you can always duplicate this and lower the opacity of the second layer if you want but um, I think this is good enough for right now now in the game I'm just gonna use this as reference um, what I did was I went on YouTube and I um, got some some videos of the fallout vats effect actually happening and I kind of synced it up with this video so now let's get this panning down effect of uh, of this grid right here as we zoom in so let's go back to our footage uh, select grid and we will control D to duplicate and name this one to grid wipe we're not actually going to animate it yet we'll do all that later um, if you select your rectangle tool and do something like this set the ma the second mask to intersect uh, we can turn off this grid here and basically if you will go to the grid wipe hit F for our feather options turn off our mask so we can see a little better and just feather that out um, so that can pan down the body and uh, it's already set to add so we're good and it's already parented to our footage so let's hide that and let's go on to the torso so what's gonna happen is it's gonna select the torso part of the body if we go to layer new solid doesn't matter what color and we'll actually copy and paste these options here I'll copy this one to our solid now if we hide we can hide these um, and zoom in and we still have to mask it out so select this and start masking so basically we're just gonna do the same thing uh, like we did for the whole body but for the torso and then we'll do the same thing for the head but you can also do it for uh, the leg the arm you can even do it for the gun um, so whatever we'll just do it. we're doing it for the torso and for the head on this one so once you have that nothing happens because you still need to set the path to mask one and let's bring the width to uh, 2.7 and we still need to apply the fast blur we can go fast blur of 5 because we're zoomed in a little bit it needs to be a little bigger uh, and let's duplicate that delete the fast blur set it to white and then we'll set the width to 1.5 we take both of these set it to add and then parent it to the footage alright looking good now let's rename these here to outline green torso and outline white torso now we need to make the grid again make a new solid and we can if we go into this composition select our layer we can copy and paste this onto this solid here um, remember we have to pre-compose it 
I'm going to name this Torso Grid. Hit M on the bottom layer here. Control C, Control V. It doesn't matter if you use this mask or this mask. Uh, they're both the same. So we take that, we set it to Add, and in this footage here you can see that it starts out really glowy like this and then it fades out and the opacity is actually like at 50 percent or something um, so we'll do that later um, what is next let's see next we're gonna move up to the head but before we move the camera here you can see we don't have our grid locked to our footage so just parent that to the footage there we'll go up to the head we can turn these off and once again layer new solid let's see let's take this Vegas effect here and the fast blur control C control V select our pen tool and we start masking again around the head so it's all just the same stuff Alright, so once you have it masked out, pretty much you want to change the path to mask 1 again. Uh, we can turn this off, then duplicate this, and set it to white 1.5, delete the fast blur, and set both of these to add to give us that glowy effect. And then, I think this is the last thing we have to create another grid or outline for. So we would make our solid go into one of these grids here and just paste it on control shift C to pre-compose again grid head uh, select one of these hit M grab that mask and throw it on there and once again we set it to add Alright, so let's rename these here to outline white head and outline green head. I can't stress enough, you have to be organized with this stuff. Rename your layers. You do not want to get mixed up. Alright, so take these three and parent it to the footage. So if we turn everything on no matter where we move around it will be stuck to our body alright so now let's make these dialog boxes you see here um, basically what I did was I just got this image from Google and uh, basically we're just gonna trace uh, these boxes here I think there's about there's about three or four that we have to do and this is um, 1280 by 720 so when we trace this here um, and bring it over to our 720 by 405 composition uh, it shouldn't be a problem and they should be big enough so let's go layer new solid and get your color selector here choose this green let's select our layer here hit T and bring the opacity to zero let's zoom in here let's grab our rectangle tool and trace this as best as possible about there is good now if you hit T and bring the opacity back up, um, and if you hit M, you can select your first mask and hit Control D to duplicate that mask. Set the second mask to subtract, and if you hit M M on the keyboard here, you can get um, all the mask options and bring the expansion down like this. So if we solo this layer, you can see we have this little box here something like that now if you were to duplicate that again uh, we'll duplicate the first one 